We have a very special guest here with us today. She is an Abu Dhabi media presenter. She is she is someone who radiates her energy in the room. She is the first Emirati to have been a UAE ambassador at her sports international sports event in Russia. She has done so much in presenting in media. She is a really really inspiring and cool person. Let me please welcome Miss Nouf Al Kathiri. Thank you, Mahreen. I'm very honored and pleased to be here with you, especially with this beautiful color. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. That was the first thing you said when you saw me. And I was it's, like, oh, yay. The color. It's like, oh, nice color. <laughs> I love these colors. You oh. know, like you you just pop out, you know. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's so, And it's such an honor to have you here. And I just realized that I said Miss Noof, even though you just told me that your name is actually Noof. Noof. So, Miss Noof. <laughs> <laughs> People call me, non-Arabs call me Noof. And I'm like, okay, fine. I live with it. But one day I was like, no, you know, enough with Noof. No, no, you have to get the right <laughs> name. Nof. Yes, so Miss No. Yeah, yes. and I keep telling them it's easy. I rhyme with loaf. loaf. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love how you like have a way to describe your name, but make it easy and funny yeah. by rhyming it with loaf. So. Yeah, because people keep forgetting names, so you have to like give them something. Yeah, that that's they smart. Know, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I and love that. that. It, and it represents like. A little bit of your like fun personality, you know what I mean? So that's I try. Cool. <laughs> so there's so much about you that's so cool and inspiring. And but there's we always associate identity with like a career or something mm. that you do as a profession. Yeah. So I just want to ask you, who are you like as a person? <sighs> that's a very big question. You know, um, I have a friend. Her, her name is Haya. Okay. And she's a very accomplished lady. And she's a very dear friend of mine. And one time they asked her to introduce herself. Okay. And I was eager to listen, you know. And she did not say her title, even though she has a very cool title, you know. Okay. She didn't say. She said, number one, I'm a human. Wow. And and that stuck with me, you know. It's like, I loved how she presented herself. She didn't talk about her job at all even though she has a very cool job, you know? And she was like, I'm a person, I'm passionate about this, and I love this, and I love that, and I try to do this, 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 this. And that really stuck with me in in how how do I introduce myself. Yeah. And... Till now, I don't know how to introduce <laughs> I still don't have the That's perfect s- answer for it that. It sounds like such a simple question, but yes. it's so tricky, you know? Yes, yes. And at the end of the day, it depends on who is asking. For it, sure. It, you know, True. like if I'm, if I'm at a job interview, they, the don't, they, don't, ca- yeah, they yeah. don't care about... Or if you're a human. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Are you going to give us what we need? <laughs> True, yeah. It, it depends on the context. Exactly. So if I'm allowed to quote my friend, hey, I'm a human. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, I do say I'm a global citizen. Wow. And I do say I'm an Emirati at the same time because I don't believe that uh, nationalism has to conflict with being a globalist. They don't. You can still be a nationalist and still care about the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. Uh, So yes, I'm a global citizen. Uh, The reason why I'm a global citizen is because of the very big exposure I had as a young child, having friends from all over the world. world really changed the way I think, I perceive things. And if I didn't have that exposure, I wouldn't be the same enough. You see here today, I would be maybe this person who only thinks about one and yeah, not two, not three, vision. not four. Yeah. Wow. So that kind of exposure really makes you think that, oh my God, there is many ways to do one little thing. And there is way, many ways to consider this one little thing. And, and, not to be selfish, you know, like if I would do something, how would that impact impact everyone else? Mm-hmm. Wow. You know, I think, yeah, I think uh, that's such a cool way to put it because you mm-hmm. never think of the fact that even though you're an Emirati and you're very passionate about mm-hmm. about that, but you still understand that you're open to all the different cultures, all the different perspectives yeah. of different countries. But why do you think that makes you a global citizen itself? Like, why a global citizen? Do you think different cultures have kind of influenced maybe your beliefs? Is is that why? We are human beings. We are social creatures. Mm-hmm. So definitely we influence each other. Yes. And across the humanity, across human history, each civilization impacted the other civilization. 
There was no single civilization rose to power without being intact with another civilization. Well, yeah. You know? So who am I? I'm a person. Of course I will be. And especially we live in this globalized world. world. We're yeah. connected to the internet. I grew up in a school that had so many nationalities. You know, of course they're going to influence me in a certain way. But at the same time, it, it is important to remember the culture I am brought up in. Yeah. You know, being tolerant and being open with other people does not mean that you lose your identity. identity. But you know, it adds to your identity. Wow. Is it hard to strike that balance, though? Is it hard to strike that balance? To me, to me, I don't think so. I, I, really, I really believe that it really opens my mind more. Mm -hmm. And I think here in this region, we have a, like a negative connotation when I say someone is open-minded. Oh, really? Yeah, they don't think of a person being open-minded means the mind is open. Uh-huh, it's they, like westernized. Yes, westernized, exactly. And mm -hmm. I'm like, no, 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 no. Being open-minded does not mean what you think it is. It means just having your mind open to different ideas, different beliefs, different people. It's tolerance. Yes, yeah. it's tolerance, exactly. And you can, you can be open-minded even within the same culture that you are in. Yeah, yeah. You know? How do you think you remained intact with your own identity and culture even though for example you had uh, friends from different countries you went to Russia you went to US and all these places so how do you think that Emirati culture stayed you know wh how does that emerge that first of all people not me but people usually judge you by your looks Oh, okay. You know, the first thing that people... True. Yeah, pe yeah. First, I'm not saying it's wrong or right. Uh -huh. No, I'm just saying the reality of life. Yeah, that's so true. So people see you, they judge you immediately. Uh -huh. Whether they're doing it on purpose or not, it's something unconscious. Yes. unconscious. So when people see me, they see me wearing shira. So that's immediately, they put you in certain box. Stereotypes, yeah. Yes. So uh, I remember when I was in Russia, and to me, wearing a shira does not necessarily mean um, representing culture. You know, I, I don't think of it that way because I, when you do something every day, you don't think of oh, it yes. as it's something True. different. True. So I it becomes like automatic. Yes, exactly. So yeah. I remember when I was in Russia, we had this culture day where everyone was wearing something from their country. Cult yeah, 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 yeah. And I was wearing like an Emirati kandora and I was wearing the burga and oh, everything. Okay. And I remember we were going also to the World Cup. Uh -huh. uh, it, it was 2018 in Russia. So uh, they were saying that people who were wearing their uh, local clothes, that was on a different day. People who are wearing the local clothes will be in the footage and they will be sitting in the first row, row something like that, uh -huh. uh, when, when taking the footage uh -huh. and all. And I was, that day, I was not wearing uh, the Emirati the burger clothes. or the Kandora. Yeah. I was just wearing a hoodie. Oh. And a hoodie does not say culture. Not at all, yeah. Yeah, but they put me in the first row. Because I was I'm wearing, wearing a shirt. And to me, I was like, no, but guys, I'm not wearing... This is not... <laughs> I'm not wearing anything culture. But to them, that was... Different. Yeah, I guess that was itself. cultural. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it was just... Like, oh, okay, just by wearing a shirt, now I'm uh, authentic or I'm cultural. Oh, interesting. But what do you think about that? Do you think that's... Uh, there's too much of a stereotype with Sheila. That's why they perceive it that way. Do you think it's a positive oh, thing? Oh, definitely. There is a stereotype. Whatever I travel, you know, like women would come up to me and ask me questions like, can you do whatever you want in your country? Um, can, you, can you travel? Can you drive? And I'm like, first of all, since my country started and we can all drive, you're mistaken the UAE with Saudi Arabia. <laughs> and, you, you know, like it's these little conversations. Can you do whatever you want? Yeah, of course I can do whatever I want. There's these ideas that they have in their head, and I don't 100% blame them. It's because of how media. the mass media, yeah, For sure. portrayed the Middle East and, 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 and women in the Middle East. You know, I have one of the comments on Instagram, oh, she must be oppressed. Oh my God, you people's know assumptions are insane sometimes. <laughs> but but it, is, it is my job as being someone in the media to tolerate... To to tolerate these comments, that's number one. Number one, yeah, for you know? sure. And to accept, number two, that pe there are lots of people who think like that. Number three, to be able to break that stereotype. Well, So, so you cannot reach the level of breaking without... First accepting and, and tolerating. tolerating it. Yes. So was that a struggle to start accepting and tolerating it? To or me, did it come naturally? No, because I am that kind of person. person. You know, it, cool. it suits my personality. I can see. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. But like for, I think for me, 
whenever I hear people talk about some kind of beliefs like of Pakistan, of Middle yeah. East, of UAE. And I'm so like, I love UAE so much. Mm-hmm. I was born and raised here. So whenever I go to other countries and there, I hear these kind of stereotypes, for me, I don't think I've reached that level of like accepting. Mm. Bec- because every time someone acknowledges, says something like this, it like, it makes me angry. You know uh. what I mean? So my first response is anger. <laughs> but that's not, I believe, how it should be. Yeah. And I really like how you've broken that process down mm. to tolerating accepting and then breaking so when you do like accept and acknowledge it how do you then break it like how do you eliminate these views of other people yeah i'll answer that but you said something beautiful if i can comment on yes for sure you said you do something but you believe this is not the way it should be handled and i think this is so brave of you to actually notice and say it loudly yeah you know people are so they can be very stubborn when it comes to their beliefs and they will protect whatever they do you know like if someone steals we're not gonna say well i did something wrong we'll protect the reason why he's why the, well i was poor oh, da, 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 da. they wouldn't blame themselves back but in, i loved how you said uh, i do this but i don't believe it should be the way it should be handled It so, took me a while, though, to... So, to, really, uh, in, kudos in, for that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and um, reaching that level is not easy. Um, how can I say this? C- being able to see ourselves and critique ourselves is something that needs lots of... Um, not concentration, I don't want to use that word, but reflection. Mm-hmm. For sure. A lot of like self-awareness, yes. introspection. So yeah. I, I'm very happy, Mahreen, that you actually said this. <laughs> yeah. Well, that means a lot. And but we go back to your question. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that, that I mm. think I didn't even acknowledge that this was yeah. something that I've uh, kind of evaluated about myself. Yeah. I think gradually I started noticing it more and yeah. then now I've acknowledged it more. So yeah. yeah, now that you've mentioned it, like now I realize, oh yeah, I did kind of reflect on yes. that. Yeah. See, being open-minded is is something that's not easy. People can say, oh, I am open-minded, but really they're not. Because once you're attacked, once your belief has been attacked, you don't yeah. think that the belief has been attacked. No, you take you. it personally. Yes, you yes. Know? You yes. don't take the idea. The idea you have in your mind is not you. Yeah. It's an idea yeah. that can be changed through time. But people believe that the idea in their head is them themselves. So once the idea has been attacked, they take it personally. Wow. And and the, uh, do you reach to the point where you can differentiate between you and the idea that's something not easy. And this is one of the things that really makes you open-minded. When I was tra- traveling, someone from a certain country, a, re- a European country came to me. And I said this before in an interview. They came up to me and they said, um, with all due respect, But what you're wearing is stupid. And you know what, what was my reaction to yeah, that? Yeah, how? what was your reaction? I'm so curious. I know. laughed. Wow. That's like a lot of courage, honestly, for you to like just kind of ignore that. Yeah. And like not take, not take it personally, as you said. Yeah. But yeah, that's like insane. Like, yeah, you really, I just laughed and I asked him, okay, why do you think so? Yeah. And the narrative changed completely. Wow. You know, I, and by the end, he he told me this. He did this and he's like, you convinced me. But you cannot convince my people back home. I was like, well, that's your job. Wow. So one person at a time. One person at a time, exactly. And being able to uh, tolerate, to accept, and then to break a certain idea The cycle goes like that. If, mm-hmm. if if I got in a fight with him, he would never listen to me. Yeah. yeah. He would never change his mind. Yeah, for Be- sure. Because once we get in a fight, my point is to protect my idea, whatever idea. it is. Yeah, it's not to listen to the other person, exactly. not to acknowledge and respond. It's just to say what you believe in, but yeah. in a more aggressive way. So. Exactly. So h- how to talk to people, how to to accept what they're saying, it takes lots of time to develop if someone does not have that skill. And I'm not saying I'm like that 24-7. No, like I get into fights with my mom all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't everyone? <laughs> so, you know, like it takes a mental state. It takes a time. It takes uh, you understanding the objective of the conversation. Yeah. You know, sure. because if you don't understand the objective of the conversation, 
you don't know where you're going to go. And, you know, like if you, there is something called logical fallacies. Okay. I remember learning this. You remember debating. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Logical fallacies. And once I learned the logical fallacies, it has been so hard to me, so hard for someone to really win in a debate. With you? With me. Yes. I've been into debates a lot. And, you know, debating is something and having an actual conversation it's with someone. Something. They're two different things. For sure. But it, it becomes harder for the other person, uh, how can I say this? I'm not going to say to prove their point, but they want to get into a fight, you know? And I'm like, okay, fine. Why are we having this conversation? What do you want to achieve in this conversation? Yeah, and you will goal? notice lots of people, there, if you're debating or you're having a conversation and they just, they want to prove themselves right, they're going to escape the actual prompt. They want to escape the actual prompt. And when you are, when you understand the objective of the conversation, you will never fall yeah. uh, fall in this trap you'll always be in line with what because yeah. i guess when you when you don't have a goal mm. your goal just subconsciously becomes to win yes exactly you don't realize it but then when you're in a debate and you're fighting and you're not there to to have a conversation you you become a person who wants to just win the conversation, the conversation. Yes, you said it beautifully yes yeah so when, once once you know the prompt people will try to to like escape the prompt and put other uh, other causes and reasons, other intentions. And, you, and you, yeah, and you go yeah. like, no, no, no. But we're talking about this, this. yeah, specifically, exactly, this. especially when you're like, when you're losing your temper. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, yes. yeah. yeah, I think that's something. That's a skill that's definitely hard to acquire. Mm. And I, as you've mentioned, I think that's something that you've you've developed and grown, and it's it's in you so beautifully. Yeah. Um, do you think that um, your school, your university helped you out in that? Or was that more of the environment that you were in? There, so when, we, when it comes to us and our personalities, you know, like everything shapes us. So for, for example, sure. my religi religion shapes me. My parents, who, who I was born with, you know, like under, they shape me. The school shapes me. The media shapes me. Yes. Whatever we, expo we are exposed Expo at shapes us. Especially when we are in a younger age, it shapes us even more. more. You know, wow. and you said, who is it exactly? It's a combination of things. It cannot be one thing. So, for example, logical fallacies really changed a lot. When I, when I speak, it changed a lot of things in my communication skills. And this is something I learned in university. Mm -hmm. A certain professor taught me about the logical fallacies. And I can't believe that there's like you learn one thing and it, it has and this big impact. Yeah, it's, it sticks it by sticks. you. It sticks, yeah. Exactly. And there are a lot of things where there are by the environment, uh -huh. by the exposure I had, by traveling, by, you know, my parents and how life, what life offered me. Yeah. You know, we all have these battles in life, you know, and it shapes us differently. Even though if you are in my same exact journey, your reaction will not be 100% the same as my reaction. For sure. You know, yeah. there's this... Um, I don't know if Johnny Depp actually said it or not, but you know, they there's put, this quote. Yeah, there's yeah. they put Pirates of the Caribbean, oh, Jack, Spar <laughs> Jack Sparrow, you know, it says the problem is not the problem. The problem is your attitude towards the problem. Wow. Yeah, and, and this is one of the things that stick with me. Yeah. How do how do you react to things? To the same. So for example, when he said you're stupid or your outfit's stupid, how do you react to that? Yeah. And the reaction will really define how this conversation will go further. For sure. Yeah, I think like the way you just like how you react kind of just flips the table. Like yeah. it becomes more of you are in power of the conversation uh, rather than the person attacking you. So, for example, mm. when when the person attacked what you were wearing, it's kind of like he is in power mm. somewhat. But then when you respond in a way that makes it more mutual, like a more mutually beneficial conversation, yeah. it just flips yeah. everything around. Yeah. So that's just something that I guess you learn as you go on. And as you said, it's like a combination of things yeah. that contribute to that. Exactly. So that's really cool Cool to see. Um, what is, from your experience being a presenter, you've talked a lot about the UAE as a presenter, talked about other countries. What is it that you've learned about the UAE culture that you cherish so much from your experience? Okay, that's a very big question. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is like something? 
I don't know, see, culture is something that you don't think of much because you you do it every day. Yeah, and it's not like one thing. Yes. It's like so many little things com- combined together. So yes. it's hard to identify a particular feature, right? Yeah. You know, if, if there's something I love in my culture that I don't find it, we find it in Eastern cultures, mm-hmm. but we don't find it much in Western cultures. Uh-huh. Is how you know, like everyone fights to pay the bill. Oh, I love that! <laughs> it's so, it's the best thing ever in our culture. In Pakistan, it's the same. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's that collective spirit. Exactly. Yes. You know, and I just love it that I know that there will be people for me, and and this is one of the biggest difference between individual cultures and collective cultures. Collective cultures, they care about the group, yes. and they care about the harmony of the group. group. Yeah. Uh, maybe sometimes too much, Shani. <laughs> but, but, you know, it's something that exists within our culture that I love so much that does not exist in Western cultures. And when you travel there and you have friends there, you know, like, and I say like, oh, I want to pay for everyone. They're going to say, oh, okay, fine, you pay for everyone. Ex- That's <laughs> literally the first thing I thought of that when I would travel and I would like, it's just in me to pay for people because that's what I grew up seeing. And yes. I love how, you know, you argue over it because yeah. you you care for the other person. That's yeah. why you're doing it. But it's so funny because everyone would just respond like, oh, thanks. <laughs> and then you go like, what? Are they taking advantage of me? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. And even in our culture, like if you're wearing something pretty and I say, oh, like a beautiful dress or a necklace... Like our automatic response is like, oh, take have it. it. Yeah, take <laughs> it. But we don't actually take it. But that's this is how culture goes. Yes. And I remember was, this was a, with the American lady and she complimented my scarf. And I was like, oh, you can have it. And she was like, really? Thank you. And I was like, oh, <laughs> oh and what did I do? <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah, but that's definitely something that um, I've seen, I've grown up with. So mm. I've learned the value of like hospitality, of caring for the other people Mm. so much so when I travel to other places like even when I went to the U.S. similar experience I realized that like this is not the rest of the world like I just thought everyone is like this (laughs) not everyone is generous yeah exactly (laughs) and it was so funny because uh when my brother was getting married we went to Pakistan Mm -hmm. and some of my friends came from UAE there um they were from different countries so when they came and they would see us like family members arguing over the bill like cousins arguing over the bill they're like they would find it so strange (laughs) and we're like that's just yes and it's not about the money it's just about the fact that you're just the intention of caring for the person that you want to be the one giving them food giving yes yeah exactly being a a giver exactly yeah and it's a big part of our culture to 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 give yeah what do you think about like all the different places that you've been to? Are there any traits that you've carried from other places? Yes. See, I believe that I'm not going to say there is a perfect way to do something, but there's so many ways to do something. Mm-hmm. But there is also the most efficient way. Mm-hmm. And the most efficient way of doing something can be a combination of things done all over the world. Yeah, And that enhances how I would deliver yeah. something. Interesting. You get what I'm trying to yeah. say? Yeah. And um, how can I say this? What's your question again? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I asked about like any specific like cultural traits mm. that you got carried from other. Like you went to Russia. You, oh, yeah. And I know you became more open-minded, which is definitely a really cool thing that yeah. you kind of gathered. But any any kind of cultural trait maybe you oh know? my god i have a i have a cultural trait that is a bit problematic I'm oh really <laughs> <laughs> this is a good story <laughs> so basically um i grew up in american environment american school system school. Uh-huh. in all of that uh-huh. you know and you learn from the americans to be direct okay you know and, okay and you know like i want this done that's You've it. done this wrong. You know, oh, you just say it to their face. You yeah. just yeah, you just say it to the even when they you write an email, it's very direct, direct. to the point, <laughs> short. I, and I like that. And it's nice, it's efficient. Yes, but it does not work in my culture. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. You know, in our culture, you know, like you have you don't say it just directly like that. You don't say what you do is wrong. No. Yes. You have to, you know, put it 
in a, in a very, nice way, yeah. like in a subtle way. Yes. Yeah. And you have to keep in mind that if this person is older than me, if this person in a higher position than me, For sure. you know, and I'm to me like, you know what? Hi guys, bye guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is it is that American style, you know, that's very direct to the point and have it, you gotten in trouble? Oh for my that? god. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, I don't know if I should say the story. <laughs> yes, you should. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I remember when I was first hired in the company I work in. I'm okay. not gonna mention what company it uh-huh, is. Okay, yes, confidential. Confident, yeah, I understand. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so um I was I was I was seeing things done not the way it's supposed to be done and okay. at the same time I was not keeping in like thinking that I'm not supposed to give my opinion you know okay. like you should just do it and be silent about uh-huh. it and one of the bosses said oh no I need some ideas and I was like this is my chance to, to say what is everything and wrong in this wrong. Life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay so uh, to me if I want to give ideas I should give ideas with a certain strategy. Uh-huh. You know, yes. there should be a certain vision, a certain yes. strategy that I can to place deliver. my, my yeah. ideas in. Can I give you just like random yeah, ideas? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay, so the place does not have a strategy. So I drew a strategy. strategy. <laughs> oh, wow. You put in all the effort in like <laughs> shaping it all. Yeah. Yes, I put all... And no one asked me, you know, no one asked about that. And I have... Okay, so I, I drew the strategy. Okay. I put the ideas within the strategy. And, and, and I started putting names of people who should work in this place and people who should not wow, work. Wow, you went next level. <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> you, you put no, I just, people who should work in this place. I didn't mention the people okay, who okay. shouldn't work. <laughs> so you were a little subtle about that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then um, and, and the, the boss did ask me, I was like, I want you to suggest names. So I did what he oh, said. Oh, okay. So yeah, and he's not, but the thing, he's not my direct boss. Okay. He's one of the bosses. Uh-huh. Okay. And then I did do the strategy. And then when I wanted to show them, it backfired at me. Like, who do you think yourself, you know, like writing, doing all of this? Who asked you to do a strategy for the place? We're happy without strategy. <laughs> and, and, and I'm not saying that they're 100% wrong. It's just, yeah, I did not understand my place within the company. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a managerial level. To do all of this work. I guess there's like a time for everything. There's a time for everything. Yeah. And you know, I'm like, and to me, I'm like, you know what? This place is 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 not doing it right. Maybe I do have a point. Maybe I don't have a point. It's it's valid. Both things are valid. But the thing is, I did not understand that I'm I'm here. You know, like I'm not there. I'm 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 here. Makes sense. <laughs> you know, yeah. and, and you cannot be direct about these things. Mm-hmm. Know your place. Yeah. I'm not saying you're not worthy. And like these are two different, different things, things, you know. That's what people kind of merge yes, together. Exactly. And this is one of the things where people should keep an open mind about when we were talking in the beginning. So um, understanding your worth is something and knowing your marketplace, that's another thing. You yeah. can be the most talented person in the world, but you're not there in the market yet. Yeah. You cannot say, I need to be paid 100 million. I'm the most talented person. Yeah, yeah, okay, you are the most talented person, but you need to build yourself in the market. And in, in order for those ideas to actually be valued. Yes. And actually not having a place in the market does not mean you're not worth but, it. Yeah, for sure. I think, yeah, I think that's something that people would kind of blur the lines of. Yeah. Like if you, like in that situation, it's easy to think, oh, like, I'm, I, I don't have value. Like, uh, yeah. I'm worthless. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you're not worthless. But, yeah, that's you, you just your market value is a bit different right now. Does not mean you're worthless at all. Yeah, I think like even in university or in actually in high school, that was something that I I realized. Whenever I would want to, I had a lot of issues with how the school was run. Like <laughs> naturally, like someone would have opinions about the environment that you're in, right? Yeah. So that's I had me. I always have opinions. <laughs> So there was some issues that I had. And if I have an issue, I am always like, oh, I want to go to like the highest person I can so that it's like quick and efficient. But it I'm, doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work. I'm like just a little student. Like you have to, as you said, know your place. But that doesn't mean that my ideas weren't valuable. It's just that I guess I needed to go through a procedure to get yes. those val- ideas across. Yes. So, yeah, I think differentiating that is a struggle but mm. it's important yeah said. Yeah. yeah and it's uh 
we're going back to the being direct thing, you know, like you want to be direct and you want to put one, two, three, four, and you want to change the world. You yes, know? Exactly. you want to change the world. You're like, why is it taking so long? Like, just go to this person, say this, that's it. But yeah, it's that's much not more complicated. The, it's unfortunately, not like that. <laughs> but that's just life, I guess. Yeah, and there is lots of, and this is something I learned the hard way. Uh, there are a lot of opinions that you should keep to yourself. <laughs> you should not give. That's something <laughs> I still have not learned, unfortunately. <laughs> I guess that's why you're here. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. I, I think also I have a friend who really, um, her name is Shema. She said something that so beautiful. She said, not everyone is worth knowing my opinion. Wow. And I think that's even beautiful, you know, like, yeah, not everyone is worth knowing my opinion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're not going to, they're probably not going to understand it. It, mi- it might be too deep for them. Yeah. So keep that to someone who's really worth it, who would really take that opinion and do something about for it. Sure. Yeah, I think that's even my one of my friends would say something along those lines mm. in my university. So, so my friend group, they're from like different countries. Yeah. So it's very natural for us to get into arguments yeah. because, you know, like I talk about my culture and they talk about their culture. So obviously I, for example, even the thing about paying for your bill, like for me, that's something very nice. Like I really like the way that occurs. But for them, it's like it doesn't make sense they're like no we should split it equally you know Mm. so sometimes we would have arguments over that and one of my friends said you know like like Mehreen you're always getting into arguments with like your (laughs) friends and that's okay but it's just that sometimes you spend so much energy on Mm. something that's really not worth it like no matter how much energy you spend on talking to this person getting mad yes. trying to convince them but that's how they were raised and that's what they would think and this is not the way they're gonna change that's that's absolutely right and to the point you know if you read the book the art of war oh i love i mean i haven't read it fully yeah. but i've r- read a few of the quotes on yeah that book. i, I yeah. love that book and it's it's all about choosing the battles you know you, you don't put too much energy in, in, in a war that you know you're gonna lose for example and that, Yanni, once you choose your battles and know when to go to war and when not to go to war, that will really save you a lot of energy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's... And it's all about strategies. And 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 the book says the best thing is not to go to war. Oh. Yeah. The so... Th- avoid, yeah. Wow. Be- because that will save you lots of energy. Energy. You only go to war only if you need to go to war. And if you know that you're losing, you do not at all, at any cost go to war. So what's the alternative then? How do you respond in a... It's it's about strategies. And then you have to create the right strategies, strategies for, for everything. For yeah. the situation. For the situation, yes. Cool. Exactly. So, well, um, you've probably learned so much from like traveling to different countries, but you know how how much this country itself has grown tremendously over the past years and it's insane yes. like it's so cool mm. so how is it like living and growing in a place that's also growing with you that, that's so true you know like I, I said this also in a previous interview I said um, the life that my grandmother had is so different, different than the life my mother had Wow. And my life is so different than my mother's life. The conversations with them would be so interesting. Yeah. And even my kids, they will grow up in a country that's so different than the country I grew up in. True. And yeah. I say, you know, when, when there's something new opening, I go like, oh, those kids, they're so lucky, lucky. having all of this. <laughs> you know, when I was a child, I didn't have I that. I didn't have this. <laughs> yeah, so, so it, the country keeps changing and it's amazing and it's really beautiful and it really makes me feel that I can do something big. big. Yeah. You know? And that goes along, it aligns with your name. Yeah. Uh, and the heights. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's and, cool. And it, it, it gives me hope. It gives me it, that, you know, like progress never stops. You know, and you, when you see, for example, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid, every time he starts a new project, every time he starts, so exciting. you know, Google Maps cannot catch up with Dubai, <laughs> you know, it's so amazing that it never stops. If some, if a tourist comes one winter and then comes to another it's winter, totally it's different. different. Yeah. But does it get overwhelming? Um, does it get overwhelming? Honestly, to me, it just, it reminds me that if a city can grow that much in a very short time, what about me? Wow. You know, 
um, cities are very hard to grow and they're very hard to build. A lot of planning, a lot. The infrastructure is yes. insane. Yes, I and for a city to grow this much, much, yeah, it means that there is still, for me as a person, there is so much I can do. Wow. And there is, um, there are so many projects that are going on that I can be part of and can actually shape how the city will look in the next years so for example when you have your kids your grandkids and you go like that was because of me i made that wow you know so it's very very inspiring wow that's actually such a cool way to put it Mm -hmm. i uh, there was one time a friend from us was visiting and um I was also born and raised actually in Elaine. Mm-hmm. And then I, I moved to Dubai recently for, for Zayed University. I'm studying the same university as ah, you actually. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. What did you study at Zayed University? So now I'm, it's a, it's a different course. It's mm-hmm. a new program they introduced. So mm-hmm. now I'm studying computational systems. It's ah. like computer science. But they've, it's a new college actually that okay, they introduced. Yeah, it's a so very Zayed University. Story. Yeah. Oh, nice. So when I saw your your LinkedIn, I was like, oh, same university. And I saw your TEDx at Zaid. I was like, wow. Yes. yes. <laughs> My TEDx at Zaid University. Yeah, too. that's so cool. So, uh, yeah. I'm actually graduating next week. You know, I graduated 2021. Oh, yeah. I was like, but the you party, gra- they're doing the ceremony. Oh, okay. They're I was so confused. <laughs> I was like, wait, you're working and studying? <laughs> no, they're doing the ceremony next week. Oh, because of COVID, it didn't happen? Yeah, usually the ceremonies are at a very different time oh, than I, the actual graduation. Makes sense. So yeah. it happened like two years later. Yeah, two years That's, later. Oh, well, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Are you excited? Actually, I was thinking like, I'm not going to attend. You know, I'm like, that's two years. You're like, I've already graduated. Yeah, like, I work. Yeah. I, you know, You're like, like, what graduation? <laughs> yeah, but yesterday I actually made up my mind. Oh, okay. Yeah, I said, you know what? It's a closure. Yeah, and it's an experience that, yeah. you know, you it's a one-time experience. The, yeah, the and I remember before I was like, yeah, graduations are overrated and blah, 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 blah. But then I today I was like, you know what, let, let, let me do it, you know. So you're going to go? I am going to, inshallah, attend. Nice. Yeah, inshallah. but I told my parents, I'm going to attend only in one condition if you're going to bring me this big flower you know? <laughs> no, I don't want this flowers no I want this big so I'm assuming they accepted the condition I didn't hear them saying yes <laughs> <laughs> my mom was like uh, well uh, why we'll pay this so much on flowers and then they're gonna die I'll buy you something else I'm like I just graduated top of my batch give wow. me something yeah you deserve it queen <laughs> yeah it, it's so funny because what your mom said is what my sister says and she, and you know there was a phase where she was like Oh, I don't want flowers anymore because they die. So you should give me a cactus. <laughs> I was like, what <laughs> kind so of done. gift is that? But okay. Yeah. yeah, I hope you get your big, big flowers, flowers as you deserve it. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah, it's like, you didn't give me any gifts, you know, give me something. At least a big flower. <laughs> <laughs> well, but yeah, coming back to what we were talking about. Um, you grow up in a lion? Oh yeah, so I grew up in the lane, and so when one of my friends he asked me when he was visiting, he's like, "How does it feel like growing up in a place that's changing so quickly?" Mm-hmm. And for me, it was like I didn't even think and realize that it's. I know that it's changing. I know it's growing, but I've become so accustomed to it. Like yeah. it's normal for me to see construction happening. Mm-hmm. It's normal for me to see something like a new mall being built or something yeah. new, and I think that's why change also became normal for me that like oh going to a new place or seeing something brand new just became normal yeah you know what i mean yeah yeah, so i think seeing dubai grow also helped me understand change or acknowledge or embrace change yeah i never think about it that way change yeah we're so accustomed to change exactly yeah Yeah. and i think it's a good trait to have to be accustomed to change you know when when covid happened you know there were so many changes around the world yeah. And the people who made it were the people who were able to adapt fast. For sure. Yeah. So being able to adapt fast I, puts puts you an advantage, not just in the market, but also in your life. In your life personally. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, the five phases of grief, you know? No. Yeah. I don't remember the order, but for ex- first is denial. Oh, okay. Yeah, like five, rejection. Rejection. Or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But then the last one is acceptance. So the faster so reaching you re- that yeah. stage the is the faster you reach acceptance, the faster the grief process will be over. Yeah. So yeah. being adapted being able to adapt fast. For sure. I think like the denial phase is like, at least for me personally, is the longest phase. <laughs> Cause for me, always when something new happens, I'm like denying that it's happening. Mm. Which of course is not how I guess in the beginning that is 
naturally what you go through yeah but just getting on with it quickly is what is what you should be doing so for me like even when covid happened mm-hmm. and my so i was studying for my a levels for like i was really putting a lot of effort into my a levels and then when i got canceled like i was in denial i was like no it's not like yeah. it's not canceled like even even though it's good that it was canceled <laughs> i didn't have to give an exam but i was still in denial because yeah. i put so much effort yeah. so i was like no 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 it, it's going to happen it's eventually going to happen but like i think covid also brought that um characteristics in me that to embrace change because change yeah. is going to happen yeah. whether it's covid or whether it's like changing houses or yeah. you know what i mean yeah it's it's normal to to human behavior to not accept change in the beginning because we're if we go back to the early human beings the cavemen so for for them to survive is to do the things that kept them alive over and over and over you yeah. know if the, if someone wanted to be out of the box and do something different they'll be eaten they'll die you know <laughs> exactly <laughs> so it's in us to to you know like you know oh this worked i want to stick to with it to be in like our comfort zone yes exactly yeah. so you know like we shouldn't give people a hard time and not accepting change very fast because all of us are like that but yeah. being able to have that skill of adapting quicker quickly really put you on an advantage For because sure. we're no longer cavemen you know yes <laughs> <laughs> um so one thing i really was excited to ask you about mm-hmm. was i saw your instagram username it's smiley nof oh, yeah. and i love that um but why smiley nof like is, where does that come from okay you know it's a funny story um i didn't know that i'm a smiley person you really i like when <laughs> i knew, when i read the username i was like i know why obviously <laughs> because of her smile i <laughs> even in the billion summit like i always saw you smiling and and your smile is so like infectious oh, thank you. <laughs> it's like a big happy smile but like i wanted to ask you yeah like, what was so i remember when we were talking about culture and that culture is something that's inbuilt in us that we practice it every day we don't see it anymore mm-hmm. so being smiley was something like that to me oh because since i young age i've been smiling 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 so i didn't really know that i'm a smiley person <laughs> you know and it was I, just natural yeah and as i grew up everyone was commenting on my smile that i always smiled but i was like oh maybe that's something i have that people sometimes don't have oh it's like a fun fact about you yeah so, so when i was doing my instagram first it was my initials and i'm like oh, that's too boring boring <laughs> it's too boring i don't want that yeah what what can it be so i was thinking what what can it be what can it be what can it be and it's like mm, smile enough you know cuz i'm always smiling so catchy. Ev- everyone everyone says everyone comments about my smile so let's put smile enough <laughs> and it's worked still I people are commenting that. on the handle yes <laughs> i love that yeah. that's that's so cool and i i didn't know that you know like smiling is not something that most people do i remember i was taking this picture with my friend and you know there was something with the camera and my friend was like i'm tired of smiling i was like what How people. can you get tired? <laughs> What? It's like that's my natural face. Like if I don't smile, then I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the opposite of like most people actually. Yeah. So it's so cool to have like just a smiling face. Yeah, that's like my 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 normal face. Like if you will catch me on any like if I'm thinking of something, you will see me like smiling, you know? So you're very photogenic like 100% of the time basically. People say that, but when I look at my videos, I'm going like, "Ah, oh, what is this? I don't look as, uh, no. as, as cute as in reality." <laughs> <laughs> no, I think like that's just everyone when they look at their own videos or yeah. listen to their own yeah. voices, that's yeah. just how they react. <laughs> but I can see like you're a very smiley person, so like all the candid shots would be so perfectly shot. <laughs> For me it's the opposite. I'm like like dead. I look dead <laughs> in my candid shots. It's crazy. But... Maybe maybe in debates I will not be smiling as much. Okay, yeah. So there mm. are times when you don't but smile. But I will be smiling, but not that much. <laughs> oh, so you're still smiling. Yeah, especially when I make a good point, you would see me like oh. with a smirk smile, yeah. <laughs> Love that, like the sassy <laughs> smile. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Love that. But w- talking about smiling mm. and happiness, It's, I wanted to ask you what makes you smile. I know you're saying you naturally smile that's just yeah. you, but what is it that really makes you genuinely smile? My smiles are always genuine, really. <laughs> you know, one person came up to me and she said, uh, "I think you're fake." <gasps> and I was like, "Huh?" 
Yeah, she's like, you're too happy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and, is that an insult or a compliment? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I was like, and she's like, you're too nice with people. And I'm like, it's just me. Uh-huh. That's that's just my personality. I smile. Uh, I'm just, and it really comes from a good place. And and it's just maybe because she she's never she never saw someone like that. Or when she talks nicely to people, she's being fake. I don't know where that comes from her. But I was like, no, no, no. That's just really me. And she didn't believe me. (laughs) She's like, you're super fake. (laughs) And I'm like, well, I take it as a compliment. Thank you. (laughs) Yeah, that's like, you don't usually get someone telling you, oh, you smile too much or you you're always happy, you know? So I think that's a compliment for sure. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. yeah, but it's just... I took it as a compliment, yeah, but it kind of annoyed me that, oh, uh, you know, like, people see me as fake just because I'm chippy and happy and bubbly? Oh, wow, you know, like... I guess that's just society, like, I think it's not common to see that, Mm -hmm. even though, like, it's so cool to see someone who's happy, who's so kind and generous, and that's just how, like, everyone should be. But I think in the real world, I don't know, from your experience... People are, I guess, not usually like that. So they find it fake. Yeah. I don't, I don't think that everyone should be like that. that oh, okay. That won't make me that special. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. But, you know, I, I think life has everything. It has all, all the attitudes and all feelings and all uh, kind of... Um, what's the right word? Help, help me here. <laughs> it has... It all, has everything. All the emotions. All yeah. the emotions. Yeah. And we cannot accept that everyone should be the same. Even For though sure. I like how I am. That's what makes us unique. Yeah. Each of us unique. But I cannot expect people, all people to be like that. And that's what makes life life. And what that woman said does not necessarily reflect what everyone thinks, but it reflects a certain slice of society. And I have to accept it. You know, I have to accept it. Not everyone. For example, not everyone is going to like you. Not, and there are people who actually dislike happy people. <laughs> there are those people who, wow. who really don't like to see happy people, you know. And you just have to accept that everything exists. And yeah. uh, what, again, once you accept it, you are able to deal with it. But yeah, if you do going not, back to this. Cycle, yes, but yeah. if you do not accept it, then that would be a, a you problem. Yeah. And you will start attracting all these sorts of uh, energy energy that you are you're actually not like, until life forces you to accept it and move on so it's better to just accept it from the beginning yeah. it's not easy you know, of course you know we're telling people oh you should accept it but it's not something easy, easy. yeah for it's sure easy. but once what you did there once you acknowledge the problem that's half the solution for sure. But when we keep denying the problem, then we'll never reach to a solution. For sure. And, you know, even in the medicine field, when someone is diagnosed with with a certain disease or something, that's already have the solution. Because if they're not diagnosed correctly, then that's even more problematic. Yeah. So, so just acknowledging it and acknowledging, then accepting, accepting it. Yes. Yeah. And then you will learn how to deal with it. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a gradual process. It's a gradual process. Yeah. Sure. So... The very last question that I'd like to end this last con- question. It's, it's been I, already an I hour. know. I can't believe it's an <laughs> this hour. This is so fast. <laughs> I'm still in shock. I think this is the fastest hour that's gone by in my, <laughs> from all my past recordings. But that shows that it was a fun conversation. Yeah. But um, the last question, I want to go back to life in general. And, yes. Um, I think life is just such a complicated it is. thing that some people may never actually understand until the end, you know? Yeah. It, it's something that you you may understand w- what your purpose is in life. You may not. You may live that purpose. You may not live that purpose. It's just something that goes by. That's... And it is something that goes by. And it is, it is not even complicated. It's complex. You know, sure. complicated is two layers. Conflicting, but complex it has so many layers. Mm-hmm. And... I do believe that everyone has a purpose. You may know, you may not know, you know, and there are people who don't even care to know what their purpose is. And that's, again, that's okay. We said everything exists in this world. Yeah. And I am going through a hard time currently uh, and reevaluating 
what do I exactly want out of life? Yes. Um, I've, I've done certain things and I've accomplished certain things. Um, and I'm, uh, as a person who studied integrated strategic communication, so I'm into strategy. Mm -hmm. I'm into, you know, like this means this. And may, I'm very spontaneous in real life, but when it comes to work, I'm very strategic. Yeah, makes sense. And, um, you know, for example, when I studied mechanical engineering in the first four years, I was like, okay, this year I'm going to enter university and this year I'm going to graduate and this year I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. You had a whole plan set for... Yeah, and life just gave me a slap. No, you're not going to do that. You know, after four years, I'm not going to do all of that. And at that point, you understand that sometimes things will go the way it is supposed to go, not the way you plan Planned. Yeah. to go. And that's okay, you know? And sometimes the things that life pushes you to is more amazing than what you are planning. And you don't realize it in that moment. You don't realize it in that moment, exactly. And I was also currently planning for something. So, for example, by the year 2023, I will be blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. But then again, it didn't happen. So I'm like, what? And and, and then I, rem I remembered the previous experience where I planned everything and it didn't work out. I was like, okay. It didn't work out again the way I planned it to, to, to go. Can we put this on silent, please? Thank you. <clears throat> Can we put it on silent? It's okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, Samuna. Yeah, so it's just sometimes you have to go with the flow. Yeah. And to accept it. And I do believe that something better will come. Come than what I planned for myself. Yeah, there's always a mm. meaning to everything that yeah. happens in your life. And yeah. like for me, even like when COVID happened, I didn't get to go to the UK to study. Mm. And I had a whole plan similar to how you said, mm. like, I will go here to study. I'll do this, this, mm. this. But then it ended up working out. Like I started doing other things. I started exploring other passions. And then I ended up with Karak with Mehreen. Yeah. So it just like there's always a meaning to everything, but yeah. you don't realize it until later. Yeah. So it's just... Learning to be patient during that exactly. time. Exactly. And if if my plan worked, today I would be somewhere at an oil rig fixing. Oh, fixing, you know, like, really? <laughs> I would then tap into media. Wow. And media just suits me better. I'm a people person. You know, I love communications. And you're really good at it. Yeah. yeah. And I believe, you know, there are certain things that, you know, are built in us. You know, you know, you, 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 you're born with it. You're born with that skill. And this was something that, yeah. Yes, communications, people. It's something I love, I enjoy. I get my energy from people. I don't mm -hmm. get my energy if I'm sitting at home. No, I get my energy when I go outside, mingle and meet people. So to your question, sometimes we will feel lost and that's okay. You know, not necessarily every single day we're going to know the answer. And it's a life journey. You know, people in their 50s, they're still trying Learning. to figure it out. So yeah. who am I in my 20s to say I have all the answers? And yeah. if someone in their 20s says, I have all the answers, no, that's a red flag, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so you just have to remind yourself that it is okay to feel lost. It's okay to feel like shattered. It's okay to have these feelings. It means that you're doing life right. And it means okay. that you are really open-minded in a way that you want to make a difference to this world when you ask yourself these questions it means that you really want to be in a path that most people don't want to be in so good job in that I love that so confusion and embracing all of that is an important part yes. of life yes you know a lot of people would numb themselves you know with whatever method for example drinking okay i'm happy that in my culture we don't do that but a lot of they will start drinking to numb that question to numb that feeling to instead escape of, from it escape yeah. from it instead of facing it yeah and some would go to drugs and you know like so th life is is we cannot answer this question and in our session i would say it's way bigger than that and it's sure. complex as we said and we, we just said that if someone says i know the answer you don't believe them that's wrong yeah <laughs> you know if, if there's a message i want to give people is that it's okay to feel lost and it's normal to feel lost and if you don't get lost i mean you're not asking the right questions 
You're doing something right in your life if you're lost. Yes, <laughs> you're doing something right. Exactly. I love that. Well, yeah. thank you so much for this amazing conversation. Honestly, <laughs> I learned so many things just in this one hour. Oh, It was so you. cool. Do you want to do a little like uh, cheers thing with the karak? Let's do this. Okay. <laughs> do you want to show the... Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay, so we'll do it like... So, guys, this is a very nice karak. I was very hesitant about it, but I loved it. Karak Yay, with Mahreen. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mahreen. Thank you.